And welcome, folks, to another episode of Let's Play Mobile Suit Gundam Encounters in Space. We're going to start with the Thoroughbred missions. Now, this is actually a bit of unique content, um, considering that outside of this game, I think the only other real reference to this side story is in a, uh, a short manga series. Known that as the White Base. Debuted. The 13th Autonomous Corps departs fact, I'm not Federation headquarters how at Jabur. Long ago that came out. I think this the game may have predated the that. The 16th Autonomous Corps deploys from Jaburo at the same time and soon leaves the Earth behind. Their mission is to keep an eye on Granada while guarding the rear of the Federation fleet advancing on the Xeon homeland of Side 3. As it carries out its assignments, and makes its way to the area between the moon and Solomon, the thoroughbred encounters an enemy patrol. Well, you heard him, we encountered an enemy patrol. Anyways, I believe we are still oh, undetected by the enemy's recon force. Let's get this over with before they contact Granada. First, we must cut off their laser line of communication. Fire the beam interference warheads so that they intercept the line between the enemy's ships and Granada. Disperse those Minovsky particles. The two Salamis-class ships will hold position, and once the battle starts, you can all support at your discretion. G04, G05, launch when ready. G05 Ford Longfellow, roger. This is my first battle in Gundam. I'm so psyched. G04, Moose Castle, also ready. All right, well, you heard him. We're piloting the G04, or 4th Gundam, and the G05, or 5th Gundam. Now, these designs were actually based upon the 4th and 5th Gundam designs to which their respective pilots, Luce Castle and Ford Romfellow, piloted originally in some of the side story, uh, just information for it. I do like these designs a little bit better than the original 4th and 5th. They're not as bulky as it used to be. Um, out of the two color schemes for them, I do like the blue color a little bit better than the red color scheme here. I wish the red was a little this bit darker, Ron probably Fellow. closer to a blood I'm red. Watching. But anyways, we get to play as four, Ford Ronfellow throughout the duration of this side story. And you know, he's All no right. great character. Fire beam interference First mission's up. Don't let any of them get away. You don't have to tell me twice. I'm raring to go. Lieutenant Ford, real combat is different from a training run. Please, calm down. I'm in the middle of the action. I can't calm down. Lieutenant Luce, look after Lieutenant Ford. Hmm, roger that. I'll get the moose eye first. Now, for the most part, what I do like a lot about the thoroughbred missions is that you hardly ever spend time in Route 2 mode. It's like almost this. always Battle Sphere. This first mission here, the two objectives are the two moose eye here. Now, they will, one of them will try and feed the battle straight, and if it does succeed, then it will be game over yeah, the instant it crosses the no return line Don't for get too far So ahead. my best advice is to take out the first wave of mobile suits and actually then continue to this concentrate on the blue side, either destroying them, to just try and blow through this mission as quick as possible, or if you want to try and you know, have Pajas go a little bit for maybe the next range, take out the line. engines, that way they can't go on the no use. Those and then just focus on the mobile suit wave as they come in. Damn the Federation! This mission can actually be pretty tough. For some people, Hurry! depending on uh, their opinion, it is actually the toughest mission in the game of the uh, of entire space. It's the absolute most uh, toughest mission. And I will explain why later on. It has to do with letting the time minor upgrades won't be five minutes. I'll probably show that off in the second video later on down the line. Not bad, now that I've disabled both of so I can too. pretty well take them out in my leisure and then continue to hey, farm reoccurring almost in two waves. For the most part, you're only going to be fighting Zaku 2 FCs, which I believe is Zaku 2 Kai, along with Rickdom 2s, which are right the giant bazooka. The Rickdom 2s are probably the biggest pain in the ass with that bazooka, Watch but this. for some reason it's a little bit easier for me to dodge than the take normal this. style bazooka for the Rickdom. Eventually, you're going to run out of mobile suit waves to go through, in which case, just feel free to go ahead and wipe the moose eye off the map. And once you've done so, it should pretty well be game over and you'll continue on to the next stage. These stages, in general, for thoroughbred mode can last you know, for a short amount of time, really. I mean, you can 
get through them in less than three minutes for each stage, depending on your combat style and how you go for things. There are a couple alternate routes in this show, but they're a little bit different than white base alternate routes, where those were stages within stages, so you do one thing and you go to a different part of that stage. For the thoroughbred mode, if you change the different route, the stages itself, or the next stage that you go to, is entirely different from story, plot, that kind of thing. So that's a nice little thing you know, that could actually get you mixed into this. I kind of wish that white base mode had, had a little bit more to that, I suppose. Now, the special weapon for right. the G05 for Fifth Gundam is that giant machine gun, or, uh, mini gun. Yeah. And it absolutely shreds Musai in this game. I love it. It is the perfect weapon for it. It's a little unwieldy when trying Enemy to attack all the suits. You can use the thrust and roll to G04, actually break lock. But for anything as big as a Musai, it's perfectly situated to destroy. Sir, the enemy fleet was annihilated before it could send out a communication signal to Solomon or the moon. The enemy will be on the move soon to investigate the lack of messages. We'll withdraw from this area as soon as we've retrieved all of our mobile suits. Yeah! <laughs> Lieutenant Ford, stop playing around. I don't know why, but I'm not the biggest fan of the animation for the mobile suits in this ga uh, this uh, game type here. It just, it just doesn't look that good. It looks like it was hastily rushed. But then again, for original animation, what else are you going to get? On patrol between the moon and Solomon, the thoroughbred intercepts a signal from a Xeon fleet on its way to Solomon from Granada. Aware of the Federation fleet closing in on Solomon, Xeon is gathering its scattered forces together to counter the attack. With no other units available, Federation Headquarters orders the Thoroughbred to confront the detected enemy forces on its own. We've detected what we believe is one of the enemy fleets on its way to support Space Fortress Solomon. We will attack this fleet. Concentrate your forces to destroy this enemy ship before it deploys mobile suit teams. All ships will coordinate their attack and bombard the enemy ships. At least half of them must be destroyed. Cannon Corps will be firing at close range at specific targets and the Gundams will be advancing with them. After the initial attack, adjust your course to provide covering fire. After attacking the enemy ships, the Gundam's task will be to determine the enemy mobile suit's strength and numbers and engage then. G04, G05, information coupling confirmed. Launch when the cannon core is deployed and watch out for the enemy fleet's anti-air guns. All right, well, to talk a little bit more about the two Gundam units in particular for th uh, the Thoroughbred missions, you're going to see a little bit of a difference in thruster performance from the RX-78-2. Uh, they, these two mobile suits are a lot faster than normal form, and they pretty well play the exact same, except for small little differences here and there. And if you look at the technical profiles, I believe the G04, which is the blue unit there, or Luce's unit, actually has a higher generator output slash capacity because of a this further feature ability fellow. that we'll see I'm later watching. on. Other than that, they play pretty similar. I do Gun like the cannon. designs, however, I do question on that some enemy of the, ship. just the armament choices G04, for G05, the suit destroy the enemy ship Namely, before it deploys their mobile suits. I like know that. They're really bulky for some reason. Right. Still, no fire the as bad as the original Is the designs. Size first? Anyways, on board to stage two. Watch this. As usual, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time in Route 2 mode, but instead go right into Battle Sphere, where we're going Many to be surrounded by at least three Musai down. and a complement of mobile suits. Watch Take this. out the Musai in whatever fashion you like while trying to destroy the mobile suits that come at you. These Musai aren't going to put up a huge amount of fight, and you luckily don't have to make sure that the thoroughbred gets hit or any other hey, ships are destroyed. So feel free to take your time and dodge the missiles, unlike what I'm doing here, and just take them apart piecemeal. Always good to be Enemy ship points. launching mobile suits. Yeah, the party just got a little rowdier. Don't let your guard down. 
Now, you could potentially destroy the Moosai before they do launch these mobile suits. However, why bother? You're trying to get points, right? If you're trying to just completely go through the mission as fast as you can, then sure, take the Moosai out and see, to see him. But always get the Patrick score with mobile suit kills. But the main objective for this mission is going to be two Pazak class supply ships along with one guarding Moosai. And those will show up once we've wiped out all of the other Moosai that we first encounter, along with some of the mobile suits they uh, launch from. Them. Go on, hit him. Unfortunately, in terms of armament, the G05 doesn't have a whole lot to offer that's really different from the RX-78-2. It has its standard beam rifle, which, while I think it's more powerful We're launching than, mobile suits. Buy us time. Uh, Enemy ship launching mobile suits. Beam rifle. Right there. I don't really think that, that it matters too much because it's kind of padded for just mission sake for it. You also have your sub which are mediocre at best. They still kind of help the city. Enemy animal. ship launching Anyways, mobile suits. Here are two Pazet class uh, uh, supply trip. ships, the little purple pink ships with those suits. Uh, just to, well, let's take it out. You can destroy it's those two parts that can stick out on either side of the central unit. However, once both are destroyed, the More enemy reinforcements. will blow up. So if you want to keep them from moving, take out the engine section and move on Check to the next it. thing. That way you can also disable the inside and not to worry about them getting out of bounds too quickly. You're going to have to deal with a bunch of mobile suits as they do start to come in out of nowhere. That was curious. Interesting enough, the Rickdom 2 there uh, really didn't have a huge difference in terms of the Rickdom 1. The biggest difference being that it had a hell of a lot more maneuvering, uh, maneuvering thrusters than the original Rick Dog. Also, its armament consisted of a different type of bazooka, namely the giant bazooka. It's still a decent kind of bazooka. Now, the Pazak class ships Enemy don't destroyed. have any other arms to attack you with, so you don't have to worry about them exchanging anti-mobile suit fire with you. So, take them out at your leisure once Captain, you've destroyed the Moosai. Captain, we're detecting enemy ships departing Granada. But their course seems to indicate the enemy fleet is headed for Abawaku and not Solomon, sir. They're abandoning Solomon? I'd never have thought they'd give up that base so easily. Captain, what are your orders, sir? Have the two Gundams repaired and resupplied. We need them launched again. G04, G05. As soon as your suits are ready, prepare to relaunch. Thanks a lot, you slave drivers. Honestly, in this situation, we're up against an enemy we can't defeat. What choice do we have? I mean, we still have to get out there and fight, right? How about if we try something a little different? You know, the standard animation where they're not moving, the mobile suits, it looks okay. It looks actually passable, but when they get into space and they're moving around, it just looks too choppy for me. I don't know why. It's still pretty cool to see them in action. An enemy fleet has been detected leaving the lunar base of Granada. Its destination, the Zeon Space Fortress of Abawaku. The Thoroughbred makes plans to attack this fleet in order to weaken it as much as possible. However, due to the challenging nature of its recent missions, the Thoroughbred's crew and resources have been strained to the limit. The pilot of G-04, Lieutenant Luce Castle, proposes a daring plan. He volunteers to use the Mega Beam Launcher, an untested prototype weapon that was discarded during its developmental phase. All right, so this is stage three. G we're going to do a little bit Mega Beam of a guard should be here. It's kind of interesting, and it's also in place with a split in the right. mission timeline. Works, begins. We I'll could explain more about that as we get into units it. With the forces we have right here. Captain, I'm against it. The Mega Beam Launcher is a prototype. Its power supply is still too unstable. Even if we succeed in firing it, we don't know what kind of strain it will put on the mobile suit. It's just too dangerous. Well, our current situation is dangerous as well. Hmm. How much do we risk for victory? You don't think it'll work, Senior Petty Officer? On paper, it should fire once at full power, but... We have no choice. I'm authorizing it. All right. You're a lucky man, Junior Lieutenant Luce. I wish I was a pilot at G-04. G-04, prepare the Mega Beam Launcher. Sometimes listening to Ford talk kind of makes me want to throttle him, just shove his head into the 
wall a couple of times. He'll knock some sense into that space helmet he calls a head. Anyways, what I brought up earlier with the G04 having a slightly different generator is for this reason entirely. It was originally meant to use this beam cannon in order to, well, wipe out swaths of enemies. However, as they stated, it was really never completed. So, here's hoping for a good result. This is actually one of my favorite missions because of the sheer amount of mobile suit combat that you'll see for it. This is Ford Romfellow. I'm launching. Enemy mobile suits. <sighs> Surprise attacks don't work every time. Secure Gundam Unit 4's firing point and keep them off him. It'll take some time for the generator output to build up. I'm counting on you until then. Lieutenant Ford, cover G04 until it's All right, ready to fire. Alright, comment, we're gonna have to make Down sure me. that the G04 does not lose nervous. all of its health. It doesn't matter how much health that it loses, was it just cannot lose all of its health. This is hey, the first this. two stages for this mission. First stage is pretty simple, just destroy everything that comes across to Freedom your field. For all space you have to do this, even if you're trying to, uh, for example, get a lower rank or power to get fewer kills. You still have to destroy all of these units because they don't really, you know, fuck off after a certain amount Enemy of time. Reinforcement. Be careful. At least I've never seen it. If you do, Maybe then I've just never really noticed it before. No! I can't die here! Now, I used to think that your health kind of mattered for this mission, G04, it really doesn't. Again, your external generator just like with everything else, I understand. the total number of points that you get is what is important. So as long as you don't continue, you'll still get guaranteed that 35,000 bonus points, and you get to take out plenty of mobile suits to pad your score along the way. More enemy reinforcements! The generators at max, now, but it's not enough for the megaparts to degenerate. Not all non-essential systems for the generator. thoroughbred. So don't get too far away from him and try and attack uh, the mobile suits that are attacking him. Glory to the if you have to get a couple Zion. of hits that were intended for moves, go for it. You've got plenty of armor. This is a beam weapon? Yeah. Also, make right liberal use of that beam hit spam tactic. It's really handy, especially when they keep appearing in little confined groups. So you can get them all within that window and just continuously fire at it. I do caution you, though, using that, you do put your mobile suit at risk of getting shot. Dead. Enemy ship launching mobile suits. Come on, we are in this combat. Is combat. This is Concentrate on the enemy in front of you. Second part of the mission, which is actually different. Smart not, Lieutenant Ford. Don't further forget our missions. Are you just going to throw away the The difference being whether or not loose castles are tracking his units coordinates. What determines that, you may ask, is your score. If you get an A rank or above, loose will survive an attack explosion. If you get below an A rank or a right there. rank or below, you will see the canonical and the canonical route, which is where Bruce Castle does not survive. The enemy fleet's moving. I'm just gonna it point all this out to the troops. I will Leave be going through Take each this. of these two separate routes for you. Now, at the end of both of these routes, both the, uh, the non-canon and canonical routes, there are two separate endings, and I'll be trying to show off all four of them as I go. Uh, I now, if you're going to go for the B ranking, I recommend that you take that uh, offer from the unnamed Fetty pilot and get him the reinforcements, because he will try and Enemy attack reinforcements. all the be careful. on screen, which means less points for you, and that's what you want. Or well, you can attempt to get yourself killed and retry the stage. It's really up to you for it. However, I just find it much easier to go for the uh, A or S rank right off the bat and absolutely obliterate every mobile suit. Repeat, on we've taken you don't have too to worry about defending to deal with any more enemies. No health bar Lieutenant Ford, Ford kind of as many enemies. enemy units as Thankfully, possible the before their fleet counter attacks. We'll recover the Gundam 04 after and fall back. We'll recover the Gundam 04 after and fall back. Pedal to the metal and just waste as much ammo as we can. 
In this stage of the mission, we're also going to see a lot more Gelgu uh, MS-14A units that are going to come up. There are going to be a few that will pop up in the stage one of this, but not as many as you can hear. Now we're going to see a healthier mix of Zaku, Kai, Enemy Gelgu attack A, force confirmed along with destroyed, Brigdom But the main fleet is reorganizing. Recover G04 immediately. Now I believe that for an S rank, the total score you need is 280,000 points. Loose. But remember, you Loose. only have to get up to an A rank. I don't know why there's a bit of lag there. Sometimes the uh, recording device I use has a little bit of trouble. And there's actually a glitch that'll appear probably at the end of this episode. I'll hopefully be able to remedy it. If not, oh well. It's only a couple of seconds of footage lost. With the decision to commence Operation Star 1, many of the Federation's space fleets begin to converge on a Bawaku. Meanwhile, the thoroughbred with the damaged G-04 docks at Solomon for repairs and to resupply. Miraculously surviving the previous incident with only minor injuries, Lieutenant Luce returns to duty after a few days off to rest. Now fully resupplied, the thoroughbred prepares to rejoin General Revel's main fleet. But just prior to departure, they receive news of the fleet's destruction by the solar ray system. Instead, the thoroughbred is incorporated into the 2nd Battalion and departs Solomon for a Bawa coup. What? An enemy force here? I guess some remnants from Solomon have been hiding just waiting for a chance to take revenge. We can't ignore them! All hands to combat status one! You're not fully recovered yet, Lieutenant Luce, so don't strain yourself. I know. I don't want to be in that kind of danger again. But I do want to test the capabilities of that new booster unit we received from Solomon. Yeah, that'll be exciting. But what about me? Aren't you worried about my safety? God, he irks me sometimes. But anyways, he's a hotshot rookie pilot, so what else are you going to get? I really do like the Thoroughbred mission line for it. It just It's a departure from the standard Gundam one-year war, and I like that. There's a hell of a lot of material to draw upon, and they finally make use of that. However, it's also one of the last times we'll see that uh, in an American or Western audience released uh, Gundam game. Ford so Wolf don't fellow. get used to it. I'm launching. Now, some differences between the actual game here and G04, the manga is that we don't get to see a lot of the Xeon the characters that you. are in the manga themselves. Luz, don't strain yourself. Don't worry, I know. Now, I'm not sure why this pauses here. The game is, just takes its sweet time loading at this one little section. Anyways, we are now piloting that was our fifth season upgrade. Gundam G05 Booster Type. This sucker the has an impressive amount of thrust engaged to the east and the a really of good Zion. amount of speed. Use it to your All advantage. Right. The I also recommend it for this stage well. since we're going to be guarding the thoroughbred for the majority of the mission. That you use that speed to close the distance and use your melee attacks to take out the Rick Doms. That way, you don't accidentally hit the thoroughbred doing a hell of a lot more but damage. Why didn't the Rick Dom notice an enemy force? Especially on this side. For the most part, Rob, these enemy units come flying in as if they're in the mode. They probably are, and so they shoot the enemy. So take your time, take your target. The thoroughbred is hit. Minor damage. Enemy reinforcements. Be careful. I'm taking you all with me. Enemy reinforcements are heading for the thoroughbred. Requesting support. Excellent. There's going to be quite Commence a few officers to take fire. out here, so Ready. even if you can't see something down. take a look at the thoroughbred. If it's still losing take health this. and it's kind of blinking or flashing, it's still going to hit from something. You may not be able to see it on your radar. Fly around a little bit and you'll be able to take a look. Also, if you're having trouble, feel free to take a support. But always remember that if you bring, do bring a support, the chances of getting a lower score are much greater because of the amount of points it will take away from you in turn, just by taking out other mobile suits. I absolutely love flying in this game. It's fantastic. It's not so good in first mode, 
when, uh, in regards to some other mobile suits that we'll talk about later on down the line, but it's still freaking amazing. Confirmed. Enemy destroyed. Compared to the gun, G04, it is G05, fantastic. Return to ship. Now, after a while, a little Musai will finally make its way into the battlefield. Make sure to take that out pretty quick. You don't want that to get anywhere near the thoroughbred because those torpedoes and the cannon shells it launches will devastate the armor of the thoroughbred. How did we ever survive for this one? That's an easy one to answer, Luce. We're survivors because we fought well. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Man, I'm not sure why, but uh, Luce Castle's voice actor really sounds like Duo Maxwell's voice actor. I haven't actually looked at who plays Castle, but it really sounds close. But I'm not surprised. I mean, they had Wu Fei's voice in this already. Why not a couple of others? The Solar Ray, an enormous Xeon laser weapon created from a modified colony, has annihilated over one third of the Federation forces. Delayed, but not halted, the Federation fleet reorganizes itself and continues to advance on Abawa Ku. Once the battle commences, it becomes apparent that Abawa Ku will be the arena for the final battle between both sides. Acting as potential reinforcements for the 2nd Battalion, the Thoroughbred takes up a position on the northern flank. General Rebel, I knew we would win this war somehow. All hands! This will probably be the final battle! We must win, but we must survive as well! Good luck, Lieutenant Luce. Lieutenant Ford, don't let your guard down. Hey, can you say something nice to me for a change? It'll all be over soon. We'll both come back alive. <laughs> of course. Not sure why, but uh, I like the cynical side of Luce a lot better than uh, the normal section for it. We also lo lose audio there for just a brief second. I'm not sure why, but it's not like we missed anything out of it. They didn't really continue talking. Anyways, we're on to the fifth and final mission for Thoroughbred Mode. There are only five stages in total for this, depending on what route you go to. Either one ends up in a fifth stage for it. There are two separate endings. I will be showing off both of these endings, and I'll kind of explain this how to get them and what not follow. to do for I'm it. Launching. As usual, there are two parts to the At stage. The moment, our forces part have an one, advantage, we're going to be defending the thoroughbred from everything really that can over. get thrown at it. G04, G05, believe in the power of the Gundam and come back safe. Roger. For the most part, we're going to be taking out mobile suits and waves Just make sure we have a place to come but back keep an eye out on the horizon because there are about three or so Musai who just love to come creeping up on the thoroughbred and then absolutely demolish it. So, entertain the mobile suits for a little while. It's all Zaku's and Dom's again. Take this. That new mobile suit that Yelgu looks pretty awkward. Must be a lot of rookies out there. Yeah, it's all Zaku's and Dom's again. Take this. That new mobile suit that Yelgu looks pretty awkward. Must be a lot of rookies out there. Zeon's lost a lot more than just pilots. We have to end this war. It's taking a terrible toll on mankind. Luce brings up a good point. The Most rookie is pilots surrounded. were Requesting using the support. newer mobile suits when the veterans were still stuck with the outmoded and just horribly underpowered Zaku's Take this. brick doms. Now, this also doesn't mean that they didn't have a ch uh, chance to actually pilot the Gelgu, for example, but most pilots had a lot of trouble with them. There was also <laughs> the problem with the, uh, the maintenance plan with these things. Because each of these different mobile suits would use separate part schemes for them, so you couldn't take some of the uh, more common parts out of a Zaku 2 and put them into a Gelgu. Like this. Now, this started to change towards the end of the One Year War, if you see how they implemented, I believe it's called the United Maintenance Legit. Plan or something like that, where they tried to standardize the basic part layout hey, every the moment, so that way they could simplify their supply routes. Watch this. Anyways, we got our first new side customer to actually come up here. The For the most hit. part, there's nothing that really you can change between the Go two units in this part, first part of the mission. So take them out at your own leisure. As long as the thoroughbred does not lose all of its health, then we should be fine. Ready to come. Call me anytime. 
Feel free to take loose if you like. He can definitely help out if the thoroughbred is getting too much pressure on it from enemy mobile suits. Just be aware that Luce, if you do choose him in this portion of the stage, I don't think he actually continues on to the uh, second portion of the stage. Take this! This is also a good example of when that was the enemy is actually way outside of your radar range and you're still hitting the thoroughbred. Be careful of that. So if you're still flying around and you can't see anything, but the thoroughbred's still losing Go armor points, him. check around it on the outskirts. There's probably something just sitting around. Defense power's down. This is getting... The thoroughbred is taking damage, requesting support. Now, a lot Wait of these there. missions are kind of tough in their own way. I have good days and bad days when playing these missions. Uh, some of the test footage I initially did, I was playing horribly. Absolutely pitiful. But uh, thankfully, I managed to pull out some good maneuvers here for the recording itself. All right, part two of stage A high five mobility begins. unit is heading your way. Be careful. Ready anytime. Yes, that's right, folks. We get to fight the bigger no, I hate cover me. this fucking game. I hate fighting it. Go However, on, it's nowhere near as annoying as this its white base mode counterpart. This this it also thing? has a couple of two Gelgoot Jaeger types. A big I it has a can't stress mega enough cannon. how much of a pain in the ass they can be if you leave them alone. They're armed with beam smart guns, which at this, this point in the game, for this story mode, take this. Can, take, uh, can take quite a bit of damage and put take on back. if you're not careful. I recommend taking out the escort of the two Gelgoot units, that way you can focus on the big road units. Also, I brought him for this mission because I want a, another this. target on screen for the big road to aim after. The defining factor to determine what ending you will get is whether or not you destroy the two big row, and there are Take two this. of them flying around. Uh, if you can destroy both big row before your health reaches a certain point for either you or the thoroughbred, keep that in mind. But I do recommend making sure that you the take out this uh, Gelgu Gager if you're an absolute pain in the ass. It also can take a shit ton of damage. But while you're taking entanglement with them, this. this is pretty well glued to the bigger, which is always more a enemy reinforcements. Actually, no indication. He that takes them out before you get a chance to even uh, really focus an attack on they also this. love to fly real close to you, which makes it a there perfect no opportunity to get a couple area. of saber slashes Please in. Please return to the ship. <sighs> it's finally over. Hey, Ford, don't let your guard down until you're certain. It's a bad habit. Lieutenant Ford, I'm heading back to the ship. Right behind you. Boy, that was easy. Ford, don't let your guard down yet. Hey, I'm tired of you always getting on my case. <sighs> You're gonna get an earful when we get back. Universal Century 0080. After this battle, all hostilities were suspended. Soon after, a formal peace treaty marking the end of the war between the Earth Federation and the Republic of Zeon was signed. And that, my friends, is the not-so-good ending. It implies that Ford Romfellow was killed in the line of duty as he was retreating. But we're going to go right into the second uh, ending here, or the better ending. So let's just look at the stage from Part A as we launch once more. This is Ford Romfellow. As I said before, the I'm difference launching. is that we need to take out both of those big row before our health and or the thoroughbreds gets down to a certain level. At the moment, our forces have an advantage, but don't let up until you know it's really over. G04, G05, believe in the power of the Gundam and come back safe. Roger. No, 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 we don't need any more of this belief in the power of the Gundam. Just make sure we have I just a want to keep to this as like too. a military style crunk story where there's no new type shenanigans going on here. Interesting little fact. It's uh, all Zaku's that, uh, and Dom's again. Takazawa, the operator. That new mobile suit, the Gelgoid, looks uh, pretty awkward. Forward throughout his set of missions. 
her voice actress actually had just TLC downloadable moments in, in the Japanese version. I think it was Pink Just kind of an interesting little thing. Unfortunately, it's not available for Western audiences, but it's something to kind of think about. Let's see, there's not much else to talk about on this stage. I mean, we've pretty well seen part A already. I mean, we've already put down the specifications that we need to follow to make the good ending. I'm just so impressed with how much thrust power this sucker has. He just completely overtakes the battlefield in no time flat. Let's see you go down. I think actually this set of the is a little more difficult to get than the canonical Let's set of stages. And I'll show those off probably in the Take next this. episode. The thoroughbred is hit. Minor damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thoroughbred always is taking damage. It's fine. It's a battleship. It's meant to this. take a hell of a beating before it goes up in smoke. I mean, after all, it's not a solemnist. Those things are like a dime a dozen. Go up in smoke. This. Ready to come. Call me anytime. Let's see what else to talk about. Oh, now for my playback here when I'm actually right recording this for the ending movie that I'm about to get, it is a little glitched on my end. I'm not sure why. The playback for the raw file is fine. However, after rendering it, the it, it just taking damage. never Request manages to come out right. Go on, but, hit him. You really don't miss a whole lot and the audio should still be intact and that's really what matters for it. If I really get annoyed at it, I'll just record Take the this. ending from the gallery mode later on down the line. I'm still not a fan of that turquoise color for the thoroughbred. This. And you can actually see quite a bit of the transition between the original white base and the Albion in 0083 when you look at the Thoroughbred here. Because the Thoroughbred has that smoother look to it that the Albion definitely takes uh, a page from. But it also has that similar shape that the white base had for it. I still don't really see the point of having those giant wings, though, if you're going to be a primarily space combat ship. A high mobility unit is heading your way. Be careful. Have I mentioned I hate fighting Big Row? Ready, any? Now! Cover me! Now I take Luce ah. off the bat here, that way he's continuously fighting the Big Row. I'm going to try and focus more now on the Gelgus Jaeger than Gelgen I did last time. Tough. Because I couldn't kill them off fast enough and it cost me precious time and health in order to get the big row. What is this thing? Now, there are two of them. I'm pretty sure Luke's actually managed to kill at least one of them off screen. Because for some reason I managed to kill the other one. Problem. I could never see the other one again. A damn beam smart this. gun can be devastating up close, but it kind of works like in the same way as a Saku 2 machine gun. And then at long range, if you're dodging appropriately, it really isn't that much of a threat. However, if they get up real close and start to use it, it will eat through your shield and your armor and nothing. More enemy Saku reinforcements. Kai's to go through. Go on, hit him. Now, lucky for us, these two big bro don't really like to uh, do the dodge roll and break your rock a whole lot of the time. Especially when you use your special. The older version would use it all the time in order to break your lock. But this isn't so bad, so you can really just kind of lay into them with that machine gun. Also, don't be afraid to go in for some actual melee combat on them. They don't really do a whole lot to Take this. Take that. I kind of lose track of loose during this portion of the match, so I'm not sure what exactly happens. But there goes one big row. And I'm pretty sure Loose managed to actually take out the other one, because I don't see it for the rest of the game here. Take this!
Once the big row have either been destroyed or fuck off, depending on what time you're going for, just mop up the remaining Xenon forces and you should complete this Take mission, this. no problem. Take so, this. The Zaku 2s don't really have a whole lot of armor when going up against your beam rifle, so one or two shots, and depending on if the shield will take damage or not, can really just at destroy them. And if you manage to actually knock them back when your shield destroyed, that's a perfect time to go right in for a melee kill, so use it to your advantage. But that pretty well is the end of the stage. There's not a whole lot left except for one or two mobile skills, and that's it. Take this! The area is clear of all enemies. Good work. It's over. Thank you, Mew. Yes. Now we know. Alright, well, enjoy the good ending. It, it is a little glitched, so bear with that. Looks like it's almost over. Could this be the beginning of a time of peace for us? That I do not know. But it's what I earnestly hope and pray for. Universal Century 0080. After this battle, all hostilities were suspended. Soon after, a formal peace treaty marking the end of the war between the Earth Federation and the Republic of Zeon was signed.